from Los Angeles and Nashville. Get ready to go behind the scenes with Entertainment Dudes. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Entertainment Dudes. Another episode, and this is the studio. This is the wide Holy studio. Holy cow! Shot. What do we got here? We got. I see you got a. What do you R2 mean? D2? We got here. Yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that's Alexa. Thank you very much. And that's a, and, that's your uh, Alexa. That's you my installed Alexa. Installed Alexa in this. Yes, Alexa is in this. So, uh, 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 I'm not gonna do it. You know how these uh, these three D printed things you three D printed break them? how three D printed things break if you drop them. Yes. So yeah, yeah, I'm nice. gonna do that right now. So we'll show it off later. Nice. Yes, I like this view. I think it's better when people can see my face and then they don't have to look so closely at yours. It's it's a good idea. <sighs> okay, it's a Just great idea. Because you said that, I'm gonna bring it back to the other uh, the other uh, camera here. Please don't. And so anyways, today we've got an exciting show for you and we've got a fantastic guest who has been involved in the, well, in as you know, in movies, whenever you have pro costumes, props, mm -hmm. all these things mm -hmm. are getting made in the background, the foreground for the characters, robots. You actually have somebody that has to paint all of those and actually create those practical effects for them in order for them to look good. So today we have a very special guest who has been involved in the painting for a number of movies, like for things like Star Wars. And we're just going to actually add him to the show. And uh, hey, hello, hey. welcome, Parker. What's up, How man? you guys doing? Good. Hello. How you guys doing? We always do an unceremonious drop in. Yeah, the just show. drop you so, in anytime. Yeah, I totally <laughs> was not ready for that. I was scratching my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that last guy? I need, I need some underwear? help painting my Mando and Grogu. Oh, so, whoa. you know, it's it's only oh, partially sick. done. So, Oh, he might but some have some good tips. You're talking about this. the resin breaking. This this part actually broke off like Ooh. just just before the show. So, anyway. Damn. Are yeah, you well, serious? That was it. That's awesome, though. Oh, that looks yep. Did you, you 3D really print nice. that? Yeah, I three three D printed this. This is resin. Yeah. What's the chrome you, on that? That looks really nice. I this is it. Team U. Chrome markers on Team U. Hmm. Team U. <laughs> yes. Yes. You it's, it's amazing. Just put a marker on it. Yeah, it's a chrome marker actually. Uh, you can do this with good. the yeah yeah you can do this with uh, um, airbrush or chrome marker. This is just a chrome marker, so. I'm gonna take the hat That's, off. It's annoying. No, no worries, man. So uh, Cam got a Cam got a carried away because uh, about a year ago he bought a 3D printer and literally everything in his entire house. His wife is 3D printed now. Gosh, he has seven no. children. No. They're all 3D printed. <laughs> <laughs> he I only have two, I only have two 3D printers now. Uh, FDM and a resin. So. Yeah. I only have one. I order my stuff usually like helmets and anything bigger is yeah. either cast or I just um, order it from a website and have them print it. Yeah, because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Well, everyone I, thinks I've it's as simple this. as it like, everyone thinks it's no, as simple. No, push a button and go. And go. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's like, no, not process. at all. <laughs> Prepping it and cleaning it. Yeah. Like, I mean, with everything and like the prop making community, everyone thinks, oh, it's so easy to make a full costume. It is mm -hmm. not. It is absolutely not. It is no, it's, br very it's brutal. Challenging. Brutal. Oh, yeah, yeah. brutal. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's harder that's things, I, but it's like, it's hard. It's not easy. Yeah, there's, I was over with, I was working, you know, Fawn, Fonco over at Fonco. He, he did a lot of the stuff. They did Nightmare Before Christmas, all of the, the, all the animation for that. He did Coraline, all the stuff for that. He's, he's been in this for a while, but he, he got a 3D printer and um, they, had to print this robot i mean this monster they created for a commercial and they had it was it took almost 72 hours to print, to print like just yeah. layered, yeah, layered and then it, it crashed that's that's it <laughs> it crashed <laughs> it crashed in the last hour oh man oh I, no and they no, had I, to start oh. all over again. oh no i feel that pain yeah. i totally oh. get that especially like when you're on the clock when you have a due date if something fails, it could mean like, you know, oh, we lose a whole two days because of mm -hmm. this now. Because we one already machine. have like because of one machine. And it's not even yeah like a, anyone's fault. It's just the machine, you know, failed. It failed the print. Yeah. Which yeah. Which is the worst. It's the absolute Horrible. worst feeling. <laughs> when you go to print your helmet, there's a big hole on it or something or missing or layer lines mm -hmm. or it shifts. It's the absolute biggest you're nightmare. like uh, that was that no. was on break. now we live in california too so there's probably a lot oh, of <laughs> <man>. <laughs> there's a lot of this uh, what happened oh, yeah. uh, just and her and crazy. hurricanes too now so hurricanes. yes we're, we're fa no, that, did you even that... feel anything i didn't feel anything like it was like someone blew through a straw 
I wasn't even in the state, so I had no clue what was happening. Yeah. I was on my way Where were Arizona. you? I was in Arizona visiting friends, and I found out as soon as I got there, as soon as I unpacked everything, my parents were like, oh, make sure, you know, check up on the hurricane. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Oh, like, my What goodness. hurricane? Yeah, I didn't find out about it until the day before. It's like, oh, the hurricane. I was like, we are not living in Florida. Yeah. I thought they assumed Florida. I was like, oh, there's I, another hurricane then I over turned there. On, I looked at the weather and I just see this big storm cloud going straight for my hometown. I was like, oh, great, awesome. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, wasn't ready for that. So, uh, Parker, tell us a little bit about what you do. How would you got started? Like, and Ooh. and exactly what is your what is your? How would you describe what you do? It's fun. It's the best job ever. <laughs> That's all. I, that's the first thing. Yeah. So that's a really broad statement. What do you guys want to hear first? Then. Well, uh, let's see. What What did you go to school for? Did you go to study, or did you do? Is this something you stumbled into as a result of just like, hey, I want to try this, or you know, how'd you get it's into? A, it's it? a real long story, so it's gonna bear with me now. All right. Let's like hear right, it. Right after I graduated that's what high the show school. Show it's for. Okay. So, my dad is in the industry. He works at Legacy Effects also. And he's nice. probably my biggest inspiration. I wouldn't say he's the main reason I got into Legacy, but definitely always wanted to be like him, kind of art guy. And I yeah. remember ever since I was like middle school, I've been doing Warhammer miniatures forever now. Like every day after school, I go home and paint for like two hours, like just constantly. And on weekends, just have paint serious? for the whole day. I'm 100% wow. serious. And it was just like as much as like I'd repaint figures like every week. And I would just practice and practice on these miniatures. And eventually it went to like World War II tanks. And mm -hmm. it just kept going bigger and bigger. But it still was in that miniature range. Eventually I started getting into six scale figures in the high school and college. But it was right after high school, right after I graduated. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Not a clue. I knew it was in the movie industry, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I tried acting and I sucked at it. I was awful. <laughs> like absolutely the worst. Took one class like first day first day in class <laughs> my dad called me he's like oh how was class i'm like you know what i think i made a horrible, horrible mistake <laughs> you know because it's like i was he's probably like was thank the, god I was, oh i think he was and, and he's like yes you know but <laughs> i remember a few weeks after that my mom was on my ass about oh you need to get a job you know summer's over you're in school you need to get a job mm -hmm. and ev no no one was hiring i had applied everywhere like any any what, year, what year was this up. around this was 2019 okay yep okay yep but of yeah of course gives us a good and, uh, good idea of what's going on yeah and no one was hiring and i did not want to go to my dad for the job i did not want to yeah. be known as like oh he got in because his dad he got in yeah. because family and I, that was the last thing i wanted to do it's a huge so, you know. fear here in la but it, everyone oh, does absolutely. it so it's like i don't want that to happen oh yeah i didn't realize that the, anyway. in the moment i had no idea <laughs> that it's like oh everyone's in here because they know someone yeah you know? yeah but um, it is. i remember it making is the a... walk of shame to his office you know my head's hung down and i'm like Fuck, i don't want to do this and i go up to him I'm like hey could i just could you see if the guys will have me in and like have me sweep up clean toilets anything i just need to make some side money he's like yeah, yeah sure yeah. let me let me text the group chat real quick and we'll see what's up and he's like oh you're hired you start tomorrow. Oh, that dude, was it. That's gonna feel so good, though. That's it, great. Felt, it was it was very intimidating because I was kind of like, "What? Yeah, you're." I was like, "You're pulling my leg. You gotta be. This is a joke." And no, he had me pack up my stuff and I went straight there the next day. And what and did you dude, start doing? What did yeah, you start did you doing start? when you I was were, when you were there? I was bottom rung on the ladder. I was sweeping up, uh -huh. cleaning up, helping people. I wasn't really doing anything mm -hmm. crazy, but I think that's when I started falling in love with it. I just kept watching everyone do certain aspects of it, like, you know, mold making or casting right. parts or body shopping stuff, sculpting, painting, everything. And I remember, I think maybe a week or two into it, I went to my dad. I'm like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. If I can, I want to be, I want to learn. That's cool. And, and then you know, COVID happened. Happy, yeah, COVID happened right at 19. Uh, COVID happy happened. COVID time. And uh, yeah, oh, and, wow. and now you're getting uh, <laughs> uh, recognized for your work, right? I mean, yeah. uh, like this kind of stuff. What is it? Mandalorian? Wow. Uh, you've also got. Oh, my God. Um, Boba <laughs> right, Fett. Huh? You've got the Book of Boba. Yeah, yes. the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, I mean, so that's just oh, amazing. Man. So in a, in a few short years, um, you're already getting recognized for your works. So that's amazing. Yeah, no, it's very surreal. It's real weird. It's it's so, so strange. And I'm so grateful for all of it. But it's definitely like I have to pinch myself sometimes because it doesn't <laughs> feel real. Like 
even we were watching Ahsoka last week, and I saw right. the name pop up in the credits for that. And I had no, I don't, we don't know about that stuff until the show comes out. Okay. So yeah, because everyone else sees is what I be, find right? out. Exactly. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh my god, did I make it? Did I make it? Did I make it? Oh, there's my name. You know. But yes. that was a good feeling. That's always the coolest feeling. And then having people like, oh, I know a guy. He works on the show. You know, it's really, it's weird. It's really, it's a hard thing to describe, but it's super, super cool. How do you learn to design things for on camera? Because it looks different in person that would being shot. Is like as in like, paint or as, as, like, as, oh, in, yeah. as in yeah, like paint, painting right. things oh, wow. and, and so <laughs> forth. Right. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's really... It's definitely strange because I feel like a lot of stuff on camera will look different than stuff in person. Yeah. So usually we just go by art, match it as close to the art that we have, and then call it a day. If they want to change stuff in post, they can. But I mean, even with like droids, we try and get it as close to the art as possible. And everything changes in camera and in lighting and on set. Right. Like you can weather up a stormtrooper suit, for example, and it goes on set. All the weathering's gone under lighting and on camera. Mm -hmm. yeah because so it's usually, so bright yeah i think a big thing i feel like that i've noticed is a lot of armors or any prop if it's dirty it has to be dirty or it won't look right like it's got it to really, be like real dirty. really really dirty because hmm. what you see 50 percent of that will go away on camera usually wow so what do you start with let's say like you know in this in the example like you did do this guy right here on the show and yeah. uh yeah. what do you start with whenever you're laying um laying a robot or droid armor like what what's the the process for approaching a character like I had a day to do that that a was day? a blur a I had day? one day that one was wow. quick yeah that one was that was a very stressful one to be honest but <laughs> one um, day just on paint there was cuz i mean mo most of what i do i just paint stuff i'm the last step of the whole factory line process so usually painters get the least amount of time to work with it mm -hmm. if that makes sense but yeah yeah well, i, I don't know we, if it we, makes we, sense but it makes sense yeah we had ordered a color <laughs> we had ordered a blue and it showed up wrong and it was made specifically for that droid it was way too blue it was supposed to be like a gray and it showed up looking like you know navy blue sea blue it just was mm. completely wrong so i had to mix up a new color on the fly and then make up a new finish for it and it was just like totally prototyping this color and finish while it also being the final product and you also have a that's day amazing. you have a night yeah that's much. crazy so do you ever do color on set too like do they call and say are you touching up while you're on set or is it um, like that droid goes off and someone else does that or how i does think that it work? depends if they want to change stuff usually they have painters on set that'll mm -hmm. change it if they need to but usually they won't Usually um, we'll send them touch up bottles of paint if they need, like if something gets scratched or damaged, they could just quickly, you know, hit it with like a color that matches and call it a day. Um, I wonder how you do that on set if it's uh, like, how do you know if it matches? Because the color on set, I mean, do you take the droid to set, look at it and then bring it back? Or do you just, how do you know if it's going to match or not? Lighting wise. <sighs> It's a great question. <laughs> usually yeah. it's um usually we have the same paint. We send a little cup of it with whoever's going down the set with it in case something happens. Like mm -hmm. um if it's a stormtrooper and it gets dinged up, you just send a bottle of white paint that matches the paint you used mm -hmm. and that'll fix it. Usually if when I'm, they like, get I'm, dinged up. When they get dinged get up, beat, exactly. I was gonna say they get beat to pieces. <laughs> like even with my Mando armor, I usually bring a little bit of paint in my cosplay kit just in case something like that happens where it's like oh a big chunk is missing let me just cover that up real quick mm -hmm. yeah and it's usually just an acrylic or something that dries real fast so yeah and a lot of stuff on if you see in films and things a lot of it is just as long as it tricks the camera exactly then it, yeah. then it works and if you see it in real life you might be like wait what that's the yeah. that's the real thing but <laughs> yeah. it works. no that's no it's it true it's yeah. as long as it fools the camera you can get away with a lot of stuff and especially like there's multiple things you have to attribute to that. Like you're not getting a lot of time. A lot of cosplayers can spend years on these costumes to make them look really good. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as a professional, you have that slotted time period from digital design all the way to out the door. And that could be as short as two months, which is sounds like a lot of time. It is not right. It is not. Yeah, a lot no, of time. it's not. No, it's real you, fast. What are some of the, the favorite things that you've you've painted? 
Ooh, that's tough. I cannot talk about the favorite things I've painted because they're not oh, out yet. Dang. That's what sucks. That's what sucks. But a lot of it, I think Ahsoka has been my favorite project <laughs> by far. Okay. Work. I could talk about favorite projects. Ahsoka is my favorite for sure. Okay. Because I got to, I was on that a ton. There's a ton of stuff I did that's in it. Um, I'm trying to think. There's so much stuff, but a lot of it's a blur. Guardians 3 was another one. That was super oh, fun. Oh, awesome. That you was painted fun. Raccoon, Rocket the Raccoon. You painted No, him. wait, I did I? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he just fur. <laughs> no, I did. Um, There was a whole team on Nebula, and I did most of her metal arms. Oh, cool. And I did her did armor really? in the beginning. I did, yeah. Um, Ooh, she looked great. She, yeah, looked really she was great. awesome. Was awesome. No, the other watched, painters. Watched was that, was that a there. resin, too, or what was that? That was what a was urethane it? sleeve on the arm. Really? So How that's does a, that that's paint? A, does that paint any differently? Or? Uh, yeah, it's a completely different process. So it's a whole flexible paint. And we did like 40 of those arms because they would just get destroyed on set and stunts. Wow. Yeah, imagine if she bumped against anything, it would just wipe right off, right? Uh, not wipe right off, but I feel like... Really? We have paints that are flexible that adhere to materials differently. So you can have a flexible like arm or armor. A lot of the armor you see on screen is usually flexible. Hmm. Not a lot of it's hard unless it's like a hero scene. It'll usually right. be a hard armor that looks really nice. But if they're doing stunts or if they're fighting or if mm -hmm. they're like sprinting, it's usually softer, more flexible material. But these arms, the problem is they weren't flexible. They were elastic. Mm. So flexible, you know, is when the material's kind of, you know, bending like that. Elastic, yeah, you can stretch rigid. out the material. Elasticity is where paint can come off real easily. Yeah. So do you have to do you stretch the material to paint it and then let it kind of go back to its shape no, or do would, you paint it we, when it's <laughs> we usually have it on a form if it's something like that and usually we just paint uh -huh. it over that and it should be fine but this material was so elastic like nothing would stick to it and really? we didn't have time to change it so we just ended up just spraying these arms over and over and over again um, oh boy I bet she loved that oh yeah totally I did too that I was employed for six months doing <laughs> nothing but arms is there oh, my gosh <laughs> Is there something, you know, different? I mean, could they develop a dye for that rather than a paint or something? I mean, is that we could have, but it, I don't, I don't think it would have been the same. We didn't have time to really, really test it. Cause if it looked different, we would have been yeah. screwed. And you got the surface the kind of look too. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and it was God. a totally Chrome arm. It's really hard to dye. Yeah. Chrome and anything yeah. Chrome really. Mm -hmm. But, um, that's why now, I prefer to like, hmm? sorry, sorry. You prefer to. I prefer to R and D stuff, test stuff before we even get it approved. That way we right. know it works and yeah. know it'll, you know, be top notch on set. And usually we don't have a lot of time for that. So it's usually pretty much just, we do what we know works best. Yeah. So you're balancing a lot between function and like perfection, how it looks, the aesthetic, and then the function of it. Like, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's much like anything else. I imagine you you want to make sure that it looks as good as possible, as as durable as possible, for yeah. as cheap as possible. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. It. There's we have, with paint. We have a triangle system we use. So, or with anything in the shop, there's you can have it. Like let's say this is the triangle. You can have it really cheap. There's money, durability, and looks. You can have it look really freaking nice, and it'll be really durable, but it's going to cost a lot. Right. You could have it be cheap and look good, but it's not going to be durable. Or you could mm. have it be cheap and durable, but it won't look good. And you could choose two of those things. Yeah. And it's almost like you'd want to try to get a little like, you know, you the like when you're designing characters <laughs> on <laughs> that's how you know designing characters on stuff, you know, you can you want to move it in the middle, so but it, yeah. it almost doesn't exist. It's especially mm. when you're on a time crunch and stuff like that's so then you're looking one. at really where is it going to show up? Is this a close up? Is this exactly. background? Is this exactly. action? Okay. Is this yeah? Exactly. So how Even do you know that? Because you don't get a shot list, do you? Do they tell you, or they did you say this is a hero? Unless it's like a main character, usually we'll assume okay, this is going to be on screen. This is going to be up close. Makeups are always usually like that, unless they're background. Um, pretty much everything we try and make the best it could be, even if it's a stunt suit. Yep. And if like my philosophy if, is if the stunt suit and hero suit look the same and they're good, you've done a good job. Yeah. If and I think for me as a director, yeah. that's great too, because I might change my mind and be like, Hey, let's move the camera over here. 
And you never know when your character will be like, oh, crap, I didn't paint the back of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> And then he turns him around. He's like, where's the paint on the back of this? No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Guy. Usually that never yeah. happens, but it's always the parts that you don't think will matter that end up mattering the most. Usually, yeah. Which is funny. It's ironic in a way. That's funny. And an interesting. Yeah. I've seen shots where, you know, you, you'll have a guy, you'll see the wardrobe afterward. Like you can go down to the fashion design center there and you can see all of the outfits that people have made. And, you know, things that never show up on camera when you watch the series, but the detail, even to the mm -hmm. laces and the way that, that everything is painted and so on. It's like it's there if the director wants to use it. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of times you don't know if it's going to actually go in the shot. Exactly. Or not. That's like to where a point you can over design a suit, you know, like you can make one of the pouches on like Mando's bandolier, like one of the bullets. It can have 20 different parts and it can be taken apart in any way and it'll stay right there and you'll never see it taken apart. That's where you got to find that fine medium between like over design and keeping it simple, you know. But and the only people who appreciate it buy the whole suit. They're the nerd. This look, I can open it up. Yeah, inside. I can. I can open every bullet and separate <laughs> it into five pieces. But I yeah, guess it's point, more it's like, so the case now too with with high definition and people being able to pause video. I mean, back in the yeah. in the you know the seventies and the eighties, they probably didn't have to be as meticulous oh, as no, you do totally. now. Yeah, right. Like, now like it's that's... always about it's like detail, detail, detail. Make yeah. sure this looks good. Make sure all the lines are outlined. You know, it's all detail work, wow. which I enjoy. I like it. That's cool. Yeah, does so that... Are you a do... would you say you were a doer? Sorry, go ahead, Cam. Oh, is it, does that does that cross over into your cosplay? Do they do they do they work together? Your career and the cosplay that you do. Kinda in a way. I try and I try to make everything I paint look the best it can, but especially with. Like cosplay is my biggest issue is I always finish them too fast because I always feel like I'm under mm -hmm. a time crunch because of work. So okay. I mean, most of the hel most of the helmets I do, I finish them within the very most like a week. Right. When which I know people are taking months, which is like blazing fast. There's helmets I've spent. Like I think I did a Black Panther helmet. And it took me a day from wow. getting the print. Are you to serious? Donald. I'm 100 percent serious. Really? Because I just I rushed it. I totally rushed it, honestly. But dang. I remember but I was did leaving. it sell? Like, I mean, it looked real, right? Oh, I still have it. I still have it. It looks good. Actually, you know what? I have a Predator back here. If you guys want to see it, that I did in a sure. day. Sure. Yeah, show us. Let's see it. it. This was a one-day paint Oh, job. that's awesome. This was all. That's amazing. Dude, yeah, that's spectacular. Look at that. In just one day. Dang. In just one day. Yeah, that is awesome. Look at that. The dings and everything. And it's all super simple too. All of this could be bought at like Hobby Lobby. That's where I get most of my art supplies. Usually, is Hobby Lobby or any art really? store. Really? Yeah. Especially for cosplay stuff, I feel like huh. you definitely don't need to break the bank and buy all these expensive paints to do or make something look really good. It's all right. about yeah, the especially artist, in on my opinion. And I think. There's also something different between doing it for a con, like if you're at a convention and people are seeing it and they can interact with you and touch it. Yeah. And then also for, for film, it's yeah. some moments you can need to be more detailed and some can be, you can get away with some stuff, you know? Yeah. Honestly, and, I feel like uh, a lot of cosplays are sometimes better looking than suits in the shows, honestly, because they're all in person. They have to be perfect. You know, mm -hmm. most Mando suits I feel like are really, they're either really kick ass or they're not. And that's just right. Mando. That's not like Mando Mercs, cosplay Mandos. It's definitely there's a fine well, line, you know. We'll talk about Chrome for a little bit because we were we were showing oh, my little Chrome guy with the Chrome marker, but it, it's it's fairly hard usually to get a, a nice Chrome uh, look, especially on a three D oh, yeah. printed helmet. And I've seen people do uh, uh, airbrushing. I've seen people do a black base and put some graphite over it. So what what is the secret to getting a good Chrome mirror like finish? Prep work. It's 100% nah. prep work, in my opinion. That part has to be real clean, real smooth. And mm. then after that, if the paint lays down smooth, you should be good to go, in my opinion. But I feel like with every paint, if you want to make something look good, it's mm -hmm. always prep work, and it always pays off. And I know a lot of people don't like that. Don't like, you know, I don't want to clean my part. I don't want to sand down the layer lines. That's what will bring it from a cosplay to a finished prop, in my really? opinion. And that's what separates yeah, I've noticed amateurs that, like, to artists. He, 
some of the stuff I've seen Ray do is like there's a different type of print. Some will come and it looks like there's lines and you have to mm -hmm. sand the whole thing down yep. and others come like really smooth. And if you don't sand them fine from a distance, it looks fine. But the moment you kind of get up close, it just feels like it feels fake. Yeah. But I feel like there's also a like I know for me, especially some helmets, I could totally ruin a helmet. I'll get drips on clear coat or little mm. bits of dust in the paint and usually i'll try and work that to my advantage usually i i prefer painting really really dirty helmets compared to clean things mm. so i mean i have yeah. another example right up here if you guys want me to bring it down of, uh, yes let's opinion, see it come, yeah, on. See. come on come this, on come on in my opinion this helmet was a fail because i messed up almost everything on it but i think back here you can see there's a bunch of kind of like little dusty okay bits and yeah stuff. A lot of this um, texture was intentional, but you know, no, it's incredible. Point. I love oh, it's it because cool. yeah, it looks real. It looks, see, it makes it look yeah, real. It does. Like, yeah. That's something I feel like a lot of people struggle with, especially when I it like comes the to light chrome. too. Oh, thank you. On there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of painters, especially, strive to be you know get that perfect chrome, get that perfect look when in reality mm -hmm. a lot of that metal doesn't look perfect metal's not a perfectly smooth surface it's beat up it's right. got yeah. dings, and i think that gives a lot of helmets and armor character if there's you know oh there's a scratch there or oh i nicked it you know unless it's like perfect mirror finish chrome you want it to be like super smooth if you have orange peel it'll be fine Here, here's <laughs> something that uh i think was one of the things that you did here for this uh yeah yeah that's amazing look at the top this is and this is resin yep that's a resin print that's the black panther helmet i was telling you guys i did in a day oh yeah that's amazing a day that's yeah. amazing that's it's cool kind of, it's a pretty pretty funny story why i did that in a day because i was leaving to new york for a job and i had just gotten that helmet in that day and my girlfriend was coming over that night so i was like i really if i don't finish this now i'm gonna be really mad on my way to New York. So I said, I'll just finish it today. Screw it. Why not? You know, and I did. <laughs> in one day. That's crazy. One day. Well, if you're properly motivated, a guy can do anything. <laughs> a guy can do anything when you're motivated. Right the <laughs> yeah, when the girl, I will be there and you will not be painting. Oh, okay. I'll I was get like, yep, gotta finish this helmet like right, real quick, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're like, thanks um, yeah. for the proper motivation. <laughs> well, I mean, so as you get going, as you get better, I'm sure you find you can paint faster because you begin to understand what corners you can cut, uh, what has to be perfect, what is okay to kind of, uh, you know, how, how do you increase your speed? And I'm imagining it's just necessity gets you to do this right usually necessity especially in the shop and on the job they want stuff done instantly they want that suit then and there so usually it's like uh, we we try not to cut corners but if it's possible mm -hmm. and if we can make it look good still we usually will i know i tend to do that and i <clears throat> honestly prefer everyone don't cut corners don't try and cheat it because you can really screw up a helmet or a paint job if you cut a corner ends up wrong you have to start over that's happened a ton of times and I recommend oh, wow. no one try and cut a corner because it's honestly not worth it. Always do it yeah. the proper way. Even if it takes a day for the paint to dry, try and keep it that way. It's the tortoise and the hare story. No, oh, totally. You know, yeah. No. Yeah. It, yeah. That's, that's exactly great. it. So temperamental wise, your temperament, would you say, obviously you're pretty patient. <laughs> overall i would say and you're a doer is that necessity is that a necessity in the line of work that you're doing yeah i feel like it is you definitely have to be patient because i know for me a big thing for me is when i start a helmet i'll you know step away and i'll look at it and i'm like damn that looks awful you know it's horrible looking i hate it and it's like i also just started it so usually it's like just trust you have to trust the process you have to wait till you see the finished projects. I know there's a lot of people that'll be painting a helmet and they'll get discouraged after spraying on one layer and be like, oh, this looks right. bad. I hate it. Keep going. Keep going mm. and get to that final product. But another thing, I always prefer to stop two steps ahead of where I think I am because I feel like if I go too far and I don't like it, then I can't really change it, you know? Mm. So I usually stay two, stay two steps behind where I want to have it and then usually that'll be the area I like it. Uh, that amazing. being so said, are, are there yeah, times where I've experienced this in video where uh, 
people, uh, you know, in the past above where I've been have wanted to see a project before it's done, yet they don't have the creative vision to see what it's going to look like. Yet, you know, you're only at this step. Yeah. Does, does that ever happen in your line of work? Usually not really. Sometimes we'll send samples or they'll come in and they'll see samples of paint colors yeah. and usually decide then and give feedback. Um, or they'll come and see the full suit or we'll do a fitting with the actor or okay. stunt person or whoever's in the suit. And that's usually how we'll get feedback. Okay. A lot of the, they aren't stupid. They know that it takes a lot of time to put yeah. an effort to make a full suit or prop. So usually they're understanding, but it's, it's definitely more of showing them test samples, having them okay. see what we can do and then having them choose. We're hired guns at the end of the day. They're the ones right, who will right. choose how it looks. We just have to make it look that way. Okay. Yeah. So when yeah. you're working on a on a uh, paint job, you know, me for I can visualize mm -hmm. a story and I picture it in my head and I'm working towards that end goal. Do you have reference drawings? Do you come up with the ideas? How do you know that you're headed in the right direction? Like with cosplay stuff or professional stuff? How about either? Well, cosplay, it's your okay. vision, right? But let's say, yeah. let's do both because the cosplay, you're okay. you're the end all. And then in pro professional, you're working for someone else's idea. Yeah. Usually professional will have a piece of concept art and they're like, match it to this. Exactly. Colors, stuff. And if they want to mm -hmm. change anything, they'll notify us about it. Um, and that's basically what we're working off of is usually some artwork that's made in house or out of house. But for cosplay stuff, especially my original paint jobs, I just come up with it on the fly usually. I just look at the helmet. I try and figure out, okay, what color do I want it? Do I want it dirty? Do I want it clean? Do I want lights in it? What texture do I want? Like that yeah. one was, But I usually have an inspiration for each one. Like that one was inspired by the Ironmonger from Iron Man 1. That uh -huh. was my main inspiration on it. There's ones that are inspired from Dune and like Halo and all sorts of stuff. There's one that's inspired off a rusty car. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Really? <laughs> cool. Oh yeah, that's. I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things my dad taught me is using real world inspiration for paint jobs, mm -hmm. and it helps a ton. Because what's a what better way to make something look lived in and realistic by using something that's lived in and realistic? That's great. So I mean, I have photos of tons of old cars, or you know, World War II tanks, or old planes, anything that like has been real has had real world use. I use as reference all the time for everything. Man, that's that's really awesome. You have such an incredible career. There's lots of different things you're working on. It's great to be able to see how you use your talent to bring something to life on a screen. And whether it goes noticed or unnoticed, it's something you feel when you watch the show. You just you sense like you're in the world and it's real and it's happening. And isn't that what it's all about? So um, where can people find you? Uh, what's the best place to find you and where can they see what you're working on? And uh, what have you got going on? Instagram. Instagram is just my name. It should be the first thing that comes up. Um, that's where I'll have all my personal projects and then some professional stuff. It's very strange when I cut when it comes to um, posting professional stuff. I can pretty much almost exclusively only post personal projects, but that's where you'll find me if you want to contact me. I try and message everyone that messages me. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Feel free to contact me, and I'll see you on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. So. Well, that was great having him on the show. What do you that think? Awesome. I like it. Yes, I love yeah. it. Whoa, what's this? Is this our That's like what? closing scene? That's our closing scene. Yeah, it's a, okay. yeah, it's a closing oh, scene. Oh, well, so, okay. So this is the video that they need to click on next uh -huh. over here. And, if, and this and, other place. And don't forget, next the, week is going to be part two next week. So don't just catch this. Week. You got to catch right. the whole thing. The whole That's thing. Right. Isn't that right. right, Parker? That is right. Part two is over there. <laughs>